What you're looking at here is a picture of two graphs, but the one on the right is also a tree. What's the difference? Well, in a tree, we're not allowed to have cycles or loops. If we go ahead and add one more edge to the graph on the right, it's no longer a tree, but it's still a graph. Let's have a closer look at the graph on the left. In mathematics, a graph consists of a set of vertices and a set of edges. In this graph, the vertices, also called nodes, are pictured as blue circles, and the edges are the lines that run between the vertices. Often we can label the vertices using numbers or letters, but because these are sets, they do not imply any kind of ordering. This graph is undirected. That means that the edges allow us to travel from one vertex to another in either direction. If we add an arrow to the graph's edges like this, now what we have is a directed graph. A subgraph is a subset of a larger graph. So here, the part shown in red is a subset of the original graph that we had. Note that if we have two identical graphs, by definition, they're also subsets of each other. We're going to talk a little bit about complete graphs now. In a complete graph, every node has an edge going to every other node in the graph. Here is the Wikipedia page for a complete graph, and it shows all the different complete graphs for differing numbers of nodes. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Here we see the complete graph for a graph that has three nodes, and you can see it has three edges. In comparison, if we were to look at this graph here, which has six nodes, we see that it has 15 edges. If we put together a little table here that shows n being the number of nodes and e of n being the number of edges, see if you can figure out what this function e of n is. In other words, if I tell you the number of nodes, how can you calculate the number of edges? You should stop this video at this point and try this exercise for yourself. All right, so hopefully you've been able to figure this out, but just in case, we're going to go through the exercise and show you how to do this calculation. We have to consider that each node is going to be connected to every other node. So let's take a look at this node, for example. And in a graph that has six nodes, each node will have five edges coming out of it. Since we have six nodes and each one having five edges, that's going to be six times five, and that's going to be 30. And then we divide by two so that we don't count each edge twice. That was our example with six nodes, so the general formula would be n, where n is the number of nodes, multiplied by n minus one, that's how many edges each node will have, and then we divide by two so that we don't count each edge twice. We're going to finish our discussion of graph vocabulary by talking about connected graphs. Let's look at this graph, for example. We can see that it's in two parts, but consider it a single graph for now. We say that this graph is not connected because it is not possible for us to go from any vertex to any other vertex. For example, from vertex B, we cannot reach vertex E. However, if we were to take this graph and just add one more edge from C to D like this, we would now arrive at a connected graph. Now we can get from any vertex to any other vertex. And the definitions for a connected graph are simple when the graph is undirected. Let's have a look at a more complicated situation when we're dealing with a directed graph. Here we have an example of a directed graph. And immediately you can see that it is not possible for us to travel from certain vertices to others. For example, if I'm at node C, I cannot get to any of the other nodes. Despite this, we were going to say that this graph is weakly connected. What weakly connected means is that if we got rid of the arrows and just reduce this graph to an undirected graph, in other words, the edges from A to B and B to C were without direction, we would end up with an undirected graph that was connected. Because of that, we would say that this graph is weakly connected. 
If, however, we were to add another edge like this, now we see we can go from any node to any other node. And this graph we would now say is strongly connected. Note that by definition for graphs, all strongly connected graphs are also weakly connected. That ends our video describing vocabulary for graphs.